thing in my life. And the first law is the divine is the law of divine oneness. And this law states that everything in the universe is interconnected. Every thought, action, and event is linked to everything else. What we do, think, or believe impacts not only ourselves, but the collective energy around us. And I found that to be very true when I was out there because there were moments when I felt like total sheer panic. And I realized that if I just sat with it for 90 seconds, it would dissipate. And that's what emotions do. They go through. Now you also have to understand too, that this mind, we think we have thoughts and emotions, but they're chemical reactions in our brain. And our brain is designed to tell stories. And if we can get beyond the storytelling, get beyond the emotions, get beyond what we think is being done to us or for us or whatever, and get out of that and become bigger, you're going to see the interconnectedness. Because the one thing that I learned and realized is we are never, ever, ever alone. Messages are giving to us, given to us every single day, so many times throughout the day, we just don't know how to look for them. And I learned how to look for those messages. And that's when I started to realize the interconnectedness. I also realized that the, there were people around me that were doing things that I didn't understand. And I wasn't necessarily happy about it, but spirit just kept saying, it's okay. This is the lesson. Look at the bigger picture of what they're teaching you. What's coming up for you in their actions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. The purpose of the show is to help you realize that you are not alone and that you are in control of your life. It doesn't matter where you come from or what your circumstances are. We've all experienced pain, suffering, hurt, abandonment, loneliness, and hopelessness. The show is to help you to turn those dark moments around and create a whole new you. Despite your success, have you felt lonely, angry, frustrated, or even suicidal? Do you long to be supported, recognized, and respected for who you are, not just for the awards and accolades on your walls? You don't want to be known, identified, or remembered in a way that feels fraudulent because you achieve things out of obligation and not passion. Do you find yourself sitting quietly at lunch, listening to what lights you up, only to feel shame? fear, frustration, and resentment. Your inner turmoil and limiting beliefs surface, making you feel not good enough and afraid of doing something different. You've read the books, attended the seminars, and practice, practice new concepts and principles, yet you still find yourself in the same rut. The lies you tell yourself perpetuate a cycle of disappointment. You say you'll change, but your self-limiting beliefs keep running the show, creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. As a certified coach, I empower you to become your authentic self. My soul journey program aligns you with your true self and guides you to find your soul vision, helping you discover your purpose in life. I provide tools to step you into your true magnificence and remember who you are. If you're interested in learning more, contact me at brave TV at Kathleen M Flanagan.com. Check out awakening spirit and aromatherapy based company, <clears throat> body care company that it offers alternative healing remedies using natural and organic ingredients. Use the coupon code Brave TV for a 40% discount. The products are guaranteed. And if something isn't wor working, then notify me and I will formulate something specifically for you. Grandma's Natural Remedies is a CBD company that includes essential oils in every blend and either broad spectrum or an isolate is included. Every product is tested and the lab results are available on the website. Use the coupon code BRAVETV for a 20% discount. I start every show with sound of the tuning forks and I bring in love, happiness, and balance. And this sets the tone for the show and brings out the best in both myself and any guests that I have on the show. So let's begin.
I want to continue talking about alignment because this is an incredibly important part of the growth that we're doing and what we're experiencing. So many people are out of alignment to begin with. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about the universal laws with relation to this. And I'm also going to talk about a little bit more about the right use of will, which is the healing and evolving of the emotional body that was written in 1984 and is very prevalent today. So the cosmic guidance and the alignment is understanding the roles of the universal forces. And it refers to the idea that there are universal forces at play in our lives, energies, or comic laws that influence our experiences and personal evolution. And these forces are often viewed as being beyond our physical realm, operating at a higher spiritual and energetic level. Cosmic guidance suggests that the universe provides signs, synchronicities, and intuitive nudges that give us on our that guide us on our path, helping us to make choices that align with our true purpose and our soul's mission. And this can come in the form of coincidences, dreams, gut feelings, or external events that seem to offer direction and insight. Alignment is in this context is about aligning yourself your mind, body, and spirit with the universal forces. And when you're in alignment, you're living in harmony with your highest self and the flow of the universe, which often brings a sense of ease, clarity, and synchronicity. It's the state where your actions, thoughts, and feelings are in sync with the greater cosmic plan, making life feel more effortless and in tune with your goals. And understanding this concept means recognizing that there is more at play in your life than just our conscious thoughts and actions. It involves developing a sensitivity to these forces and learning how to read and respond to them. Ultimately, using this guide to navigate your life is a way that feels deeply fulfilling and purposeful. <clears throat> so before I start going into the comic cosmic laws, comic, I think that's funny. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to bring out to your attention. A lot of time, I mean, we are, this world is really out of control on so many levels. Okay. It really is. And what I'm finding, well, let me tell you a dream I had a couple of days ago and, and then the attempted assassination of Trump, which really did something as well. So I want to share this because this is going to lead us into where I want to go. So a couple of nights ago, I had this dream and I was in a car and I, the, there was a woman driving. I was in the front seat and there were two men in the back. I knew immediately they were my guides. I was not in control. My guides are guiding and they're driving the boat, so to speak. And that's okay because I want them to drive the boat. That means I'm coming along for the ride, so to speak. But in the dream, what was really traumatizing was the roads that people drive on today are insanity. I could be doing 80 miles an hour on the highway and I'm being passed as if I'm standing still, okay? We think we are in a video game and that is how I'm going to say it. And we're not. This is people's lives that are at stake because you drive like an idiot. People die because you drive like that. If you're late, maybe you should have left earlier. Okay, so that's where I'm going to go because in this dream, there were cars that were driving like that in my dream. And, you know, my eyes were probably this big when I'm watching the cars come and pass and then take off in front of us. And not that we were driving slow by any stretch of the imagination in this dream. But I had complete trust. I knew I was safe and that was the main part of the dream. Right after that, first one, the second one, there was a car and I swear it was like an international, one of those little tiny cars that you drive in Europe, the real tiny things. And there was this 20 year old boy in the car passing us going like, ha ha ha, look at me, na 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 na. And he just barely missed us as he pulled in front of me and he was going so fast in his car, there was a parked car right next to where we were and he smashed into that car. I heard the crash. I immediately tensed up in the dream because it was so real and I knew he died because there's no way in that tiny of a car 
at a parked car, driving as fast as he was driving, thinking this was a joke. But the thing was, as we were driving by the accident, I could hear him wailing. Now, I knew he was dead, but his body was still like in this incredible pain. And I knew he was, al if he was alive, he was smashed alive. Very traumatizing. That dream was very traumatizing because that's how people drive today. And, and that's a reality. My understanding of what this dream is, is that spirit's taking care of me, it's guiding me, it's protecting me, and I don't have to worry about the crazies out there because right now I think the world is crazy. Then we have this attempted assassination on Trump playing golf. And I don't understand this world because we were woken up at 9.30 at night um, that this, uh, my partner's uncle called to tell him this. And I got really upset and I was in a really funky place yesterday. And I understood where I was at. And sometimes you just wonder, why am I here? What's the purpose? Nobody's getting it. This p place is really lost and confused. But as I continue to read the right use of will, I understand what's going on. This is all about denial. And part of what denial is, for those of you who don't want to pretend you know what it is, is that you deny everything. You deny your feelings. You deny attitudes. You deny how you think, how you feel. Instead of owning who you are, instead of owning the darkness within you, instead of owning what's going on up here, you deny it. That means you're out of alignment and you're out of balance. Now, what's, what's coming on this world, there's another place for people who are choosing not to get into alignment, okay? Because the earth is going to heal, she's going to ascend. That's what I know and that's what I believe. So in this process, if we're not making that attempt to start owning what we think and how we feel and embracing it, releasing it and letting it go, you're going to go someplace else where you get to continue to live in this crazy insanity. And I don't choose to live there. So yesterday when I was really in it, where I was really feeling, as we called it, I think a melancholy Monday or a manic Monday, something like that is what my coach called it because I was just in this really funky place. And I was just like, life is hard. This is, and it was because of this dream. It's because of the Trump thing. It was because of a lot of things were hitting me on an emotional level. Now I acknowledged every bit of what I was feeling, every bit of it. I acknowledged it. I sat with it. I felt it. And then I let it go. And then I was able to talk to my coach about it. And when I talked to my coach about it, it was like all of a sudden I could see things differently and better and I could get back into alignment. That is what part of alignment is. Aside from being totally connected in body, mind, and spirit, we also have to acknowledge our emotions because our spirit and our will have to be in alignment. And our spirit and our will is this form. We have a physical form. This is part of our manifestation process. And there's an out of, we're out of alignment with our spirit and with our will. Now, spirit wants to go down this road over here and form our will is saying, well, I'll go there, but can you just explain a little bit where we're going? Cause I'm just kind of like, I'm not sure where we're going yet, but I just kind of want to know. And spirit gets all mad. And then it goes into this denial. Well, you know, our bodies, I mean, we want to manifest things. Okay. And that's what this world is. That's what this form our bodies are is a manifestation. Okay. Now we're having trouble manifesting on this planet because we're dark we're dense and we're in denial. So if we think that we're going to manifest anything in our life, it's going to take oh, quite a bit because we have to manage through what's going on up here, what we're feeling in here, and we have to start owning who we are. When I decided to go to Chicago in 2008 and decided I wanted to be a better person, that was what, that was probably the biggest thing that led me to where I am today. Now I didn't understand where I was going yet, but I knew I was going there. And because of that, this was the opening of where life was going to take me. And I'm going to start going into some of the universal laws and explain that when we come back from our commercial break. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the bold brave TV network. <clears throat> so what I want to, so when I was in Chicago going through the various things that we're going through, and I'm, I'm going to talk about the first seven of the cosmic, the universal laws 
because when I just reviewed them, it was like that was pretty much what was happening in my life. And the first law is the divine is the law of divine oneness. And this law states that everything in the universe is interconnected. Every thought, action and event is linked to everything else. What we do, think or believe impacts not only ourselves, but the collective energy around us. And I found that to be very true when I was out there because there were moments when I felt like total sheer panic. And I realized that if I just sat with it for 90 seconds, it would dissipate. And that's what emotions do. They go through. Now, you also have to understand, too, that this mind, we think we have thoughts and emotions, but they're chemical reactions in our brain. And our brain is designed to tell stories. And if we can get beyond the storytelling, get beyond the emotions, get beyond what we think is being done to us or for us or whatever, and get out of that and become bigger, you're going to see the interconnectedness. Because the one thing that I learned and realized is we are never, ever, ever alone. Messages are giving to us, given to us every single day, so many times throughout the day, we just don't know how to look for them. And I learned how to look for those messages. And that's when I started to realize the interconnectedness. I also realized that the, there were people around me that were doing things that I didn't understand. And I wasn't necessarily happy about it, but spirit just kept saying, it's okay. This is the lesson. Look at the bigger picture of what they're teaching you. What's coming up for you in their actions. And that's what I started to do because I started to realize that every person is a gift in our life, even if they drive us absolutely up a friggin' tree. They're here for our highest good. It's not for them. It's for us to see what is not that we can't see because we have so many blinders. And when you can start getting bigger than your limited thinking, you can start seeing this. So then the next law is the law of vibration and everything in the universe, including your thoughts and emotions, vibrate at a specific frequency. Likes attract like, meaning that the frequency you emit through your thoughts, feelings and beliefs draws experiences that matches that vibration. Learn that one too, because when you're sitting there in the E or type of mentality or everybody's doing to me or you're angry or you're traumatized or whatever it is that you're feeling, <clears throat> you draw that to you. Now, I know a lot of people say, just be in the power of positive thinking. Well, that's really fine and dandy because you do need to do that because that helps, but it doesn't help if you don't start changing what you're thinking up here, because it still comes in here. Your unconscious mind is running your life. So when I was in Chicago, I lived in a little 600 square foot apartment, which was perfect. And if it was a mess, it was because I was a mess in my mind. That's how I looked at it. It was the dirt was my dirt. It was whatever was going on. So when you live in a bigger house, you can get away with more things being disarrayed without it looking like a mess or a cyclone hit it. So I really got very tuned into my thoughts during that period of time. And then when I came back to Colorado is when I started like embracing and living from what I was learning in Chicago. And I realized that if I got back into doing something that made me happy, joyful, playful, I got more happy, joyful, playful, and the signs of gratitude and everything else around me was shifting to where it accelerated my forward movement. The next one is the law of correspondence as above, so within, <clears throat> so below, <clears throat> excuse me, as within, so without. This law suggests that patterns repeat throughout the universe. Our inner worlds, which are our thoughts and emotions, reflect inner outer world, which is life circumstances. Again, paradigms, limiting beliefs, self-talk that's not positive. That's why when people talked about the power of positive thinking, there's that, but you have to understand what's going on. And the only way you're going to understand what's going on inside of you is to sit back, listen to your feelings, sit in the muck of you because sometimes it just sucks to sit in your shit, but that's what you do because we don't know what we don't know. And we don't know what's hiding and lurking within until we find it. And what I found was that when I went inside and dealt with that dark, heavy, dense, traumatic, 
energy and it wasn't fun, but it was liberating and it was freeing. And I understood who I was and I knew what I was supposed to do and why I was here. And that is what happens when you do the hard work. Again, I was getting into alignment without knowing the words yet. The fourth law is the law of attraction. And this polar popular law holds that whatever we focus on consciously or unconsciously, we attract into our lives. Positive thoughts attract positive experiences, while negative thoughts attract negative outcomes. Now there's truth in that. And then there's also, you have to know what's in your unconscious mind, because even though I practiced for many, many, many years, the power of positive thinking, I still had crap coming towards me. And part of that reason that the crap was coming towards me was because of whatever was going on inside my brain. This is before Chicago. This is before I took those deeper steps. Now I was doing hard work. I was in dark nights of the soul. I was releasing. But when you get into the core of what those thoughts are, of what you really feel, when you really own and embrace those feelings, that's when you start seeing what's in your unconscious part of your mind. And the perfect way for that to show up in your life is to look at your life. Where are you today? What's happening in your life now? Who are the people that are around you? What are they saying to you? What are you saying to yourself? All of those things make all the difference in the world. And if you can't unconsciously start looking at what's going on in your thoughts, I, you're never going to get that, you know, I'm going to make a million dollars. Anybody can say, I want to make a million dollars, but there's work behind that. There's a physical energy that goes behind that. And if you're in your dark, dense part of undeni of denial and I'm just not going to feel this and I'm going to stuff it and bury it, you're not going to get what you want. It's, it's the truth. I, I've, been walk I've been walking testimonial of that. So then you have the law of cause and effect. So for every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And this is the idea of karma. And what you put into the world, whether positive or negative, will return to you in kind. Sometimes we wonder why people have such beautiful lives and what's going on around them. And we sit there and we're jealous and envious and we have all this other stuff going on. Well, that's fine. And I'm, you know, I figured the way I looked at my karma, I did to them. I must have got people really good to be treated the way I was treated in this lifetime. Now, I understand my heritage. I understand where I came from. I understand. And if you really want to know who I am, read my books, Dancing Souls, because it's the trilogy. That's my life story. That's my journey. And that book keeps unfolding after all these years. I keep learning more. I keep going further into understanding and clarity about the truth of those books. The other thing too, was when I came back, I read the Gnostic and the law and it was, oh my God, it was like my books written totally different, totally different, but it was still my books. It was still what I knew and experienced in Chicago was real. And, and we, and spirit was letting me know this is real. It's, it was hard to bring them out to the world because it was very private and it was very personal, but Hey, I'm a number one bestseller and I'm award winning right now on two books as well. The third one, I haven't even gone up for awards or even started on book selling number one, best selling. the same for book two, but you know what? I'm going to get both of them. So I've already got awards on the second book. So I'm really happy. There's something in those books for everyone. Then we've got the law of compensation, and this is similar to the law of of cause and effect. And this emphasizes that the universe will compensate you for the effort you put into something. You reap what you sow, whether in relationships, career, or personal growth. So right now, this is a big area for me to trust because I have put in a lot of time, energy, and money into myself and into my businesses. I don't see the so-called rewards yet. But what I am noticing at this point is I'm making connections with people, which those connections will lead out to God only knows what. I know that I've, I've heard and I believe this, I just haven't experienced it yet. I've had moments, but not to the degree that I want, that it we're like a bamboo shoot. We're like a bamboo tree. 
you plant the tree and you see nothing for three years, absolutely nothing. But what's happening underneath the surface is that the roots are growing, going deep, they're widening out, they're expanding. And in that third year, that tree just pops up. Now I know at this moment, that's where I am. And my coach and I, we had this conversation yesterday and he was saying, you are so close to a business breakthrough, you're right there. Now I'm noticing that as much as it scares me to come out in the world, I'm coming out in the world, I want to come out in the world because we are still social beings regardless. I may not like what's going on in the world, but I do have tools to help people to move through this. And that's the main thing is that my vision, my purpose for being here is way bigger than I am. And I agree to help this planet, just like every single one of you have a reason and mission for being here. You just haven't gotten back into yourself yet. And the minute you start doing that, you're, still, you're going to learn what that is. And I do have a program, my soul journey course and coaching around this will show you and teach you how to get to that point. The next law is the law of perpetual mutation of energy. And this law suggests that energy is always moving and changing form. You can change your life by understanding how to transform lower energies, which are negative thoughts or emotions, into higher ones, which is positive thoughts and emotions. You change something right now, it alters your past life, time, life time, timeline, and it alters your future timeline. Now, we do have things called the butterfly effect, which is like mind blowing to me because, you know, like Jif and Jiffy, oh, I know about both of them, you know, is certain things that are going on that I know about the different timelines. I also know that we can go into quantum futures and quantum past. I've done this. I have tested all of this. So, and I know that the minute I change something within my thought processes that are maybe not positive or negative, it will change all the way across the timelines because the only place we have time is in the third dimensional world on this planet. The minute we start growing and evolving and remembering because we are going into the fourth and fifth dimensions and we're going to go ahead and take a commercial break on that. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the bold brave TV network. So I want to talk about the law of polarity, and this is everything has an opposite, love and hate, light and darkness, hot and cold. And these contrasts are essential for understanding and growth. This law teaches that opposites are necessary to, for balance and development. We don't know how far we come unless we look back and reflect. We don't know where we're going if we don't, I mean, we don't know how far we've come if we don't look back and see where we're going. I mean, we live in a law of duality, the yin and the yang. We're always going to be striving to be in balance of where we are. And by reflecting on your life, where you are, what you're thinking, who is around you, you know, do you want to change how your life is going? Then you have to change you. Your life doesn't change unless you change. Nobody, you can't change anyone else. So if you want your relationships to change, that means you change. But when you're looking at the law of polarity, those contrasts help you to see where you are and how much further you need to go. Or maybe if you need to start tweaking and adjusting because you're seeing this trajectory going off a little bit differently than where you want it to go. And that's, that's the other part when you're with the law of perpetual transmutation is that as long as you're paying attention, I think I talked about that, as long as you're paying attention to where you're going, or if your thoughts are getting off track a little bit, that's what are the law of transmutation of energy comes in too. So you're using this as a guiding system as you're moving and navigating through life. So then we have the law of rhythm and this law speaks of the natural cycles of the universe. Everything flows in cycles, much like the seasons or the phases of the moon. Understanding this can help you adapt to the ups and downs of life and find your own rhythm. That is so incredibly true everything is cyclical. I mean, look at, we go through every year, we go through spring, summer, fall, and winter. Every year there's different seasons, there's different energies. Our biorhythms change. We don't pay attention enough to what that law of rhythm is. And even though 
I, you could have growth spurts. You could have times of quiet reflection, like you're in the dead of winter. And maybe this is a time for reflection. And when you start realizing that there are cycles and, you know, and I'm learning this in the business world too, that business has cycles as well. Now I've heard it, but I don't think I ever understood it since I am becoming even more active in my own personal business and understanding what is required of me, <coughs> excuse me, to get to where I want to go. So I trust a process. I take my time. I pay attention to where I'm at. I don't want to miss anything. I Because I if I go too fast, I can crash and burn. And that's the last thing I want to do is crash and burn. Then we have the law of gender. And this refers to the masculine and feminine energies that are present in all things. And it doesn't relate strictly to biological gender, but to the balance of these forces within each individual, helping us to create and manifest in life. That goes with the law of giving and receiving. One's masculine, one's feminine. That's the whole thing. I mean, again, this is like that polarity thing. This is like the yin and the yang. We're always working with this. I mean, if you look at electrical receptacles, we have a masculine and we have the feminine. I mean, your screwdrivers, or not screwdrivers, but screws, things like that. This, it's all masculine and feminine. Something screws into the other, something plugs into the other. And that's what we as humans do is we are, I would say we're probably more the masculine and spirit is more the feminine. And we plug into them to create that union that, that we become whole and complete within that when we allow spirit to work with us and guide us through the processes. Then the law of relativity, nothing is good or bad, big or small, except when compared to something else. And this law teaches us that we, how we perceive our situation depends on our frame of reference. Everything is relative to the context in which it exists. Again, what are you thinking up here? We create drama and drama doesn't serve anyone. As you're creating the drama, as you create a story, you know, you create all this stuff around you. As you're creating that story, then you've got this chemical release going on, which now is tying into our emotions. Okay. And now we're suffering and we're suffering because we're creating a story within the drama of something that probably has no meaning other than what we chose to give it. That's why when we say you want to be detached, is that so you're not life isn't controlling you. Your house doesn't control you. Your partner doesn't control you. If you stay detached, and if things happen, then it's just an event. I mean, like when my ba basement flooded last year, it was an event. I didn't make a story up about it. I wanted to understand why it was there. I needed to understand what the lessons were. And part of it, and I got all the lessons out, out of it. I also received, I also saw my own personal growth within it. So when I took the story out, I didn't suffer about it. I just reacted, not reacted. I responded to it. The word responsibility is responding, not reacting. And so that's when, and that's what the law of gender or the law of relativity can mean is that it's just an event. And as long as you keep things that it's an event and what can I learn from this, then that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. It's going to keep you on that path that you want to go. You're still going to do this in your life. There's no getting around that. But you're going to see a bigger purpose for your life because of it as well. Instead of thinking I'm not getting anywhere, I'm spinning in circles and all this, the weird things we say to ourselves. So then there's the law of divine timing. This is the one that everyone suffers at um, because Everything happens in the perfect time and not according to our plans, but in alignment with the gender of the cosmic plan. And the law reminds us to trust the timing of the universe and not to rush or force, force outcomes. I have always tried to push getting what I wanted, always. <clears throat> and I'm realizing that I've worked too hard. You, you can cause severe health issues by doing stuff, by forcing things to happen. When I've sat back and started to just allow things to come towards me, that I do what I can do, spirit comes towards me, they're showing me where to go, what to do, how to move to the next level, I do that. It makes my life so much easier. 
Because if I was supposed to have what I wanted right now, I would have it. So obviously there's something more that I need to do, something more I need to learn, or my energy frequency needs to get a little bit higher to be where, to go where I want to go. And I was talking in my mastermind today that if I'm, I'm taking my baby steps coming out because I know safety is an illusion, but I don't also want to shut myself down and scare myself because I know I can do that as well. So I'm willing to take my time to move forward, pay attention to where I am and just, you know, I'm jumping in, even though my foot's in, I'm jumping in more and more because I'm, it's, it's like, I'm paying attention. I'm not denying that I'm, I have fears or I'm nervous or I'm scared about things. I'm doing it anyways. You know, the old Nike motto was just do it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. I'm seeing it. I'm feeling it. I'm experiencing, I'm allowing it. And then if it has any validation, I'll do whatever I need to do. If it's just a weird thought that's just releasing out of my body, because sometimes it's just releasing, it's just going away, but we hold on to it. Well, I don't want to hold on to stuff anymore. I want to let it go. I want to be free. I want to have, you know, just be like the, the fool in the tarot cards that I just trust that everything is in working in perfect timing and in divine order for my highest and best good. And when I can do that and start living that, then I know that I am moving closer to where I want to be and my vibrational frequency is increasing and everything that is right to be mine will be mine. If it's meant for you to have it, you will have it. You just have to work through it. Then you have the law of balance and harmony and the universe always seeks balance. If things are out of alignment in one area of your life, there will be signs to restore harmony. This law teaches the importance of creating equilibrium in your personal and spiritual life. That is so true. That is so true because I need quiet time because I like to, I like to be alone. I don't want to be isolated. I don't want to be a hermit. I want to be able to have my quiet time, but I'm also out there in the world with people. And so I am learning now what that looks like for me. So if I'm on calls all day, I don't mind being on calls all day, but the next day I'm dying because it was too much energy that I expended. So I am slowly working my energy up to be able to do more than what I'm used to doing because I've spent a lot of years in hiding, just healing and recovering from what I had experienced. And so I'm, I'm using this balance and harmony and it's working really well because in that process of balancing, I see more of what's happening. I see more positive coming in. I see more, more messages coming towards me and I jump on them because I can see them because I'm not out of whack in my head. Then we have the law of unity and this law highlights that the ultimate reality is one of unity beyond the perception of separation, separateness, Everything and everyone is connected at the deepest level. We are all part of the same source and this understanding leads to higher consciousness. And I know that to be true, I know that this world can be challenging, but I also know that deep down inside, we all come from the same place. We all feel the same. We all think the same. We all still want basic things. We want a roof over our head. We want to provide for our families. We want our kids to learn and grow and have a safe world to live in. You know, we want to have nice things around us. And it's not necessarily having the nice things that that is so important. It's just providing comfort and making life a little easier. I mean, this is probably one of the better times on the planet because there's not that much lack in the world as we once had. And I think that's one thing that people, once people can start realizing that we all come from the same place, that we're all entitled to what we're entitled by a divine right, but we're not entitled to walk all over anyone or mistreat them or beat them up or bully them or anything else, because that's where we have a problem. That's where denial is running in your life. That is where you are out of alignment and out of balance. And it's time for you to look at it because if you're being bullied or you're bullying somebody, then who did it to you? And when do you start healing and taking responsibility and becoming a bigger person? Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. 
So basically, when you understand the laws, we can learn how to live in alignment with them, creating more harmony, abundance, and fulfillment in our lives. And these law laws offer the framework for navigating life's changes, challenges, and opportunities with a greater sense of purpose and spiritual awareness. Now, I know that we all are operating under the laws of the universe. And a lot of times we don't know what that is. We want to think that we're victim to things. We want to think whatever it is. We want to think we're, you know, people are doing it to us. God doesn't like us. God's mad at us. Believe me, I walked around that way too. I, I did all of it. <clears throat> but none of that is true. I mean, we need to come back to source. We need to come back to our true essence of who we are. And the best way that we can do that is getting back into alignment. And like with Amber on the show, and I'm also an alignment guide, <clears throat> it is, it's so profound when you come back into alignment with yourself. The struggles that you experience in your life is because you're out of alignment. When that law talks about when you're out of alignment, you're going to see it. I notice that because I pay attention to my life. I pay attention. I'm like a cat. Cats notice when something is out of alignment in their world. The minute you change something, a cat knows it. I do the same thing. I used to have a partner who used to just move something. I'd walk in the room and I would know exactly where it was and I would get mad. I'm like, why did you do that? And he was testing me because he had never seen anybody who could sense energy to that degree. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be paying attention to what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and how, what's going on in here, in here, and out here. And we assimilate what that is and where we want to go within that energy field. That's why I know when something's going on. That's why I know that this world, things are changing. That's why I know what's coming. That doesn't mean I know how to work around it. It doesn't mean I know what to do yet. But I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm receiving tools and how to navigate. I am a way shower and I am showing you the way. You may not be where I am right now. You may not fully understand what I'm talking about at this moment, but you will. There will be a come a time when you're going to wake up and you're going to go, oh my frigging God, I need help. And I will be there for you when that happens. This part of alignment, this part of reconnecting with yourself, with your source, with your God, whatever you want to call it. I don't care if it's a tree or a light bulb, if that's your God or higher self, because you're not an atheist. There are no atheists on this planet. I don't care what you say, because if something's, if there's a lion or a bear coming after you, I promise you, you're going to be praying to something. So I don't even, you know, when people say that is no, you may not believe in certain things. You may not it doesn't matter, but you're going to pray to something higher because you can't believe you could be this small by yourself. We're magnificent beings. We are designed to be magnificent beings. We are designed to create. This planet was created for us. It was created for us to move into who am I? What can I do? What can I create? In the land of Pan, which is long before the land of Lemuria, the very first spiritual beings that inhabited this earth was in the land of Pandema. Okay. And in there, we weren't governed by a government. We weren't governed by anyone. Nobody told us what to do, how to do it, when to do it, where to do it. There were spirits out there and all they were doing was creating. If they wanted something to eat, something manifest for them to eat. If they wanted to go ride a horse, a horse would appear and they go riding. That was the, that is what manifestation is. We think it, we create it. But because of the denial of the spirit and the will right now, because we are out of alignment and because this energy is so dense and dark right now because of us, that's not going to change until we start changing. The more people come into alignment, the more the darkness starts to lift. We have to stop calling the darkness in. So if the dark people die, and we call them back in, they come in. Now, there's a dispensation that they're not allowed back in right now. And that's a good thing. That's why the light is coming. But we have to wake up. It's time for us. We don't have to be perfect when this world shifts. All we have to do is have the intention that we are working it, that we are paying attention to what we're thinking and feeling. We're not denying it. We're not stuffing it. We're not putting it on somebody else and say, here, you take it. I don't want it. 
we are embracing what we're feeling at the moment. We're acknowledging what the body is doing. If it feels stressed, if it's scared, if it's apprehensive about something, that's okay. Just feel it, allow it to express whatever that is. And it's not fun, okay? It's not a fun place when your body's doing, oh my God, because I've been there. I mean, I, I went through that in Cabo when refer, a first cause thought, cause thought released from my body, I didn't have any words. And what was I told? Well, if you were supposed to have words, you would have it. You're supposed to feel it, let it go. And I did. It didn't feel good at the time, but I did. I allowed it to free. I birthed it and released something at the same time. And everything shifted in my world because of it. I became lighter. I became more aware. My energy fields went up. This all came because I'm choosing to be in alignment. I am doing what my soul mission is. I can teach you how to do that. I can teach you how different techniques for forgiveness, for resentments, how to move through paradigms, how to rethink who, you know, what the lies that were perpetuated on you and see through that. I can teach you how to raise your frequency, how to get back into alignment, how to create your soul vision. Every single one of these things I have done personally. And I created a course based on that because it is so desperately needed. How many people don't know what to do or how to do it? I have been doing this my whole life. I woke up at 16 years old. I am 67 years old right now, folks. I have been around the block. I have a clue. Don't care if you don't want to work with me. That's okay. That's not an issue. Find somebody. And if you, we can't work together, I'm not, the, I'll be the first one to say, you know, maybe you need to find someone else. So I'm building a network of people that I can refer you to because I want to see you have everything you're entitled and desired to in your life. And that's, that's how I feel about everything right now. So basically, that's all I'm going to say. I'm on my little high horse and not that I mean to be on a high horse. It's just that this, this is so critical and we are in such a dire time that we really do need to wake up. And I really want to see our world change and for all of us to heal and have a better life. So my question is that if you found any value here, I would really appreciate it. If you would share the link, if you would like or subscribe to it, send me a comment. I'd be more than happy to share. You know, I'd love to get into a conversation with you about it because I think this is really important and I'm really working on building my network and I'm planning on getting on stages so I can really start getting more out there in the world. And your guys' help and support is really appreciated. My books, um, Dancing Souls, The Call, The Night, Dark Night of the Soul, and Awakened are available on Amazon and KathleenMFlanagan.com. And I am running something. If you buy them off my site, I'm offering, if you bought all three, it's 15% savings. And I would sign them to you or anyone else. My KathleenMFlanagan.com site has a list of services and products that I'm offering. And if there's a three minute de-stress meditation, that's out there absolutely free. No email is required. So please check it out. At least if nothing else, just get into a better, happier place. Awakeningspirit.com. Take advantage of the 40% discount by entering Brave TV into the coupon code. And Grandma's Natural Remedies.net is a 20% by adding Brave TV. Well, that's all I have for this week, and I will see all of you guys next week, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.